the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The grace and peace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. Today, as we come together and continue in our Easter joy through this fifth week of Easter, we celebrate also uh, the memory of Our Lady of Fatima and the apparitions to the three children of Portugal. And we call on Our Lady's continued example and intercession to guide us in a world of needing, uh, in the need of God's grace and peace. So let us turn to him with the fullness of our hearts and ask for the forgiveness of our sins. Lord Jesus Christ, you are mighty King and Prince of Peace. Lord, have mercy. You are Son of God and Son of Mary. Christ, have mercy. You are Word made flesh, the splendor of the Father. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. O God, who chose the mother of your Son to be our mother also, grant us that, persevering in penance and prayer for the salvation of the world, we may further more effectively each day the reign of Christ, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Some who had come down from Judea were instructing the brothers, unless you are circumcised according to the Mosaic practice, you cannot be saved. Because there arose no little dissension and debate by Paul and Barnabas with them, it, would de it was decided that Paul, Barnabas, and some of the others should go up to Jerusalem to the apostles and the presbyters about this question. They were sent on their journey by the church and passed through Phoenicia and Samaria, telling of the conversion of the Gentiles and brought great joy to all the brethren. When they arrived in Jerusalem, they were welcomed by the church as well as by the apostles and presbyters, and they reported what God had done with them. But some from the party of the Pharisees who had become believers stood up and said, it is necessary to circumcise them and direct them to observe the Mosaic law. The apostles and the presbyters met together to see about this matter. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The responsorial song. Let us go rejoicing to the house of the Lord. Let us go rejoicing to the house of the Lord. I rejoice because they said to me, We will go up to the house of the Lord, and now we have set foot within your gates, O Jerusalem. Jerusalem built as a city with compact unity. To it the tribes go up, the tribes of the Lord. According to the decree for Israel, to give thanks to the name of the Lord. In it are set up judgment seats, seats for the house of David.
The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said to his disciples, I am the true vine, and my Father is the vine grower. He takes away every branch in me that does not bear fruit. And every one that does, he prunes so that it bears more fruit. You are already pruned because of the word that I spoke to you. Remain in me as I remain in you. Just as a branch cannot bear fruit on its own unless it remains on the vine, so neither can you unless you remain in me. I am the vine. You are the branches. Whoever remains in me and I in him will bear much fruit, because without me you can do nothing. Anyone who does not remain in me will be thrown out like a branch and withered. People will gather them and throw them into a fire, and they will be burned. If you remain in me and my word remains in you, ask whatever you want, and it will be done for you. By this is my Father glorified, that you bear much fruit and become my disciples. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. As I reviewed what I wanted to say for the homily today, uh, it became apparent to me that uh, this homily was going to be more about how I missed Father Juan Pedro and less about the gospel. So hopefully the gospel sneaks in there somehow. But uh, as we were just rounding off the first few weeks of the coronavirus lockdown and the safer at home mandates uh, in the governor's order, I found myself wanting the flavors of Father Juan Pedro's cooking when he was uh, with us here in the parishes and living uh, in the rectory. So I decided that I would bring out some beans that I think were in the cupboard when he left. So uh, uh, they may have been a few years old, but they were dried, and so what could go wrong? I boiled them up, and then I panicked. So I called Father Juan Pedro, and I said, I'm making your beans because I wanted the flavor of them, and I don't know what to do. So after he got done laughing, he kind of walked me through the process, and, uh, and they ended up with a great texture, a really good look, and uh, they tasted like chicken feet, so I'm not sure exactly what I did wrong, but I finished them off nonetheless, and uh, it was a little bit of a friendship that I have enjoyed and a little bit of coming together. One of the things that he did very well in the kitchen was Uh, using the things that we were growing in the garden. In fact, things that God had planted as well. There was a particular weed that he, or at least what I call the weeds, that he would go out and clip and then I would see on the countertop and then pretty soon they would be in the chicken that he was preparing for supper. Um, But he was very good at cilantro and uh, we planted it and then the next year it would Uh, reseed itself all over the garden so we had plenty and uh, I would just let it grow I didn't know what to do with it and uh, so it would eventually become a tall stocky white blossom uh, shrub and it was useless for me but he knew what he was doing so he would go out and cut off the top and then use some of the leaves and then he'd go and cut again for a very small amount and pretty soon the plant was this shrub of wonderful leaves that could be used to uh, make the most delicious things in the kitchen. He understood the nature of pruning. And sometimes it can, for those of us who don't know what we're doing, it feels like we were 
cutting off something prematurely and it wouldn't come back to life again. But God knows us better than we know ourselves. God knows what needs to be retained and what goodness we have activated from his grace in our lives and what needs to be cut away and uh, repurposed. So when it comes to pruning, we surrender to the words of Jesus that he gives us today, that pruning that, uh, that really brings out the best fruit that we have to give. And as our example, other than Father Juan Pedro, who is an excellent pruner, we have also Our Lady of Fatima. She leads us to the vine. She who is herself one of the branches, the primary branch among us, she receives that life-giving grace in a way that she understands. And we then follow her example. When she remains connected to her son in his saving grace, then she distributes it to the world and teaches us how to follow him. So when she appeared around the time of the First World War to the three children of Fatima in Portugal, what she needed to do was teach them how to listen to her words, to the words of God, to the gift that he desired to give to the rest of the world. Francisco, uh, among them, this, the boy, the son, was considered to be mischief, and he had to be corrected, mischievous. He had to be corrected and uh, return his ways to obedience to his family and to the will of God to grasp on to the prayer that she was asking. We ourselves as well are told to then show repentance for our sins and then deepen our prayer and ask God for the conversion of Russia as uh, she asked for at the time of our hearts of every nation of the world to trim away that which leads us away from God and to let blossom that which leads us to him. So as we lean on the prayers and intercessions of Our Lady of Fatima, may our hearts be converted. May our repentance willingly chip away those things that we know are harming our relationship with God. And then may we see the good that happens when we unite ourselves to the heart of Christ and the things that we ask for accomplished in this world because we are the disciples of the one Mary brings us to, the very brothers and sisters of her son, Jesus Christ. God our Father wants all to be saved and calls us to the knowledge of the truth. Let us pray to him with all our hearts. For the Holy Catholic Church, may we turn to God in faith and ask for his blessings upon it, we pray to the Lord. Lord that the prayers of Our Lady of Fatima, whom we remember today, be joined with Catholics around the world as we pray the rosary each day during the month of May for peace and healing. We pray to the Lord. For those whose hearts are troubled or afraid, that they may come to know the lasting peace, which is the gift of the risen Jesus, we pray to the Lord. For those whose employment has ceased during the COVID-19 pandemic, that they will soon receive the assistance which they need, we pray to the Lord. For all of those who have died during the coronavirus pandemic, and today for the soul of Ruth Killian, that they may share the glory of eternal life, 
we pray to the Lord. For all of our personal intentions. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Incline your merciful ear to our prayers, we ask, O Lord, and listen in kindness to the intercessions of those who call on you. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. 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 Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Receive, O Lord, we ask, the prayers of your people with the sacrificial offerings that through the intercession of Blessed Mary, Our Lady of Fatima, the mother of your Son, no petition may go unanswered, no request may be made in vain. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation to praise your mighty deeds in the exaltation of all the saints, and especially as we celebrate the memory of the Blessed Virgin Mary, to proclaim your kindness as we echo her thankful hymn of praise. For truly, even to earth's ends, you have done great things and extended your abundant mercy from age to age. When you looked on the lowliness of your handmaid, you gave us, through her, the author of our salvation, your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Through him, the host of angels adores your majesty and rejoices in your presence forever. May our voices, we pray, join with theirs in one chorus of exultant praise as we acclaim. <laughs> It is here. 
are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly, we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, and William, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours, for ever and ever. Amen. 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 At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. 
Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you always. Behold, the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Prayer for spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the blessed sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire you with all my heart. Since I cannot now receive you sacramentally, I ask you to come spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already in my heart and unite myself to you completely. Please do not let me ever be separated from you. Amen. Let us pray. As we receive this heavenly sacrament, we beseech, O Lord, your mercy, that we who rejoice in commemorating the Blessed Virgin Mary may, by imitating her, serve worthily the mystery of our redemption through Christ our Lord. Amen. And for the church and for the world, together we pray. St. Michael the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our safeguard against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of the Heavenly Host, 
by the power of God, cast into hell Satan and all the spirits who prowl about the world, seeking the ruin of souls. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Go forth, the Mass is ended. Alleluia, alleluia. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Alleluia, alleluia. alleluia.